Okay, I'm Tim. I'm going to do your show and tell. The trailer does have one 12 volt battery on the front of the trailer. Two 20 pound propane cylinders. Inside the eye on the regulator, it shows that it is empty. As soon as we would turn this one on, it's going to turn green inside the eye. Green inside the eye. I know it's not empty. There it goes. As soon as that bottle would happen to come empty, it's going to turn red back inside that green eye. Indicate that the bottle it's pointed to is empty and it's having to pick up from the one on the opposite side. Then all you have to do is flip it over to that one there, work off of that one while you take this one to town and have it refilled. On your electric jack on the front, it does have lights for hooking up at nighttime. Has your up and down button. For any reason, it won't go up or down on its own. It does have a 30 amp fusible link right here on the front. Check it first. But there is a manual way that you can come in through the top and manually crank that jack up or down. The jack's going to be in your front compartment. It has the two tabs on the bottom of the gas bottle cover to hold it in place while you travel down the road. But it also has the quick disconnect up on top. We're going to take it right back up on top of that. <coughs> it is prepped for a solar charge on the front. Then if you buy the solar panel that sits out beside the trailer, it will recharge the battery on front only. Spray port hose is for the spray port on the trailer. You have two way lights in the front compartment. They can be on one way or the other. We must have got important. So we'll just tap down through here. We got your lug nuts torqued at 110 pounds. Tire pressure is air to pressure, which is 65 pounds on the side of the tire cold. Your first connection here in the back. The black tank flush is on the back of the trailer. Your three inch valve in the front will get pulled and drained. Then you can hook your black tank flush up to it and clean out the inside of the black tank only. Two inch valve in the back is your kitchen sink water, your bathroom sink, and your shower water. Hot water heater works two ways. Electric and propane. You wanna make sure that you got water coming out of the top before you turn on electric or gas. Also has a drain plug. 1316 socket takes it in and out. That is where you'll drain the hot water heater for winterizing and dewinterizing and in between long trips. Both your switches for the hot water heater are on your monitor panel, the electric and the gas. In the very back, there is the port spray that the blue hose in the front compartment hooks to that gives you cold water to the back side of the trailer. You have a satellite hookup and a park cable hookup. The park cable hookup is the park that you're at has cable, you can hook to that, and you'll have the same cable that the park does. You have a city water connect that you can hook to with a water hose and regulator and never have to fill the fresh water tank on it. The bottom connection is your black tank flush. While you're dumping your holding tanks, you can hook a water hose and regulator to this, turn water pressure onto it, and clean out the inside of the black tank only. Your power cord goes straight on, tighten up the black knob, it is 25 to 30 foot long. It does have a blue light on the opposite end that indicates that it has 110 power coming through it. It is also prepped for a backup camera up top. It does have a spare tire. It's not been torqued on, so it's been on with a wrench, but it is there to pressure. Your next connection over is the outside of the furnace. It sucks cold air in the top, hot air out the bottom. And I always suggest putting a mud dauber screen over the outside of the furnace for the simple fact that once it's been lit on propane, the mud daubers love that smell. They go in there and they build their little dirt nest, and then you'll have trouble with your airflow through your furnace. On this side over here, it does have the electric BL jacks on it. Extend and retract. Freshwater tank fills right above the two axles and drains right below the two axles. You also have another hookup out here on the outside that works off the park cable or the antenna on top of the trailer. A 110 outlet to plug it into. Two external speakers on the outside. I'll have to show you more about that in the stereo when we get to the inside. The little black hole right by the door is for the manual crank that cranks the slide room in or out. For any reason, the slide room won't go on its own. It is a three quarter inch nut that will manually crank that room in or out. Electric switch for the front, electric jacks up in the front, extend and retract. Inside the main compartment, 
There is three handles in the front compartment. The little one is for the tongue jack on the front of the trailer. The slotted one is for the BL jacks, the electric jacks on the front and back of the trailer. And then your three quarter inch nut one here will manually crank your slide room in or out. It does have the two way lights on it. Now we're gonna go back to the front door. We're gonna open the door fully open. The steps is the next thing you should put out. Blue handle loosens the steps from the door frame. Little push button on the bottom of each one of the legs. There's 15 to 18 holes in the bottom of the legs that you can adjust. The main thing on the steps is when it comes out, it has to lay flat in the threshold so that the front door closes over the top of it properly. Now we're gonna to go to the inside of the trailer. It does have a working fire extinguisher. And then we're gonna run the slide room out so we get more room. And we'll go ahead and we'll run that on and out. You might get wet staying in there. If it's got water in it. Yep, it dripped a little bit. As the awning comes out, each one of the arms has a pitch point on it that you can pull down on to put the pitch of the rain coming from one side to the other. And let's get it out till the tail hangs down. There we go. On the arms, there is a pinch point on each one that you can pull down against. That puts the pitch of the rain coming off this corner here. It does the same thing to the back arm. When you get ready to roll it back up, it needs to be up and in the straight position. We're gonna come back into the monitor panel again. Up here at the top, it has a battery button that shows you this battery's fully charged. That's not really accurate when the 110 line's plugged in, it overrides that to get an accurate reading of the battery, has a 110 line unplugged. <coughs> Fresh water tank shows you that it's still two thirds of the way full. Black tank shows you that it's empty. Gray tank's empty and does not have the auxiliary tank on the trailer. <coughs> First blue button at the top is the water pump, it turns the water pump on between the freshwater tank and the faucets. The second one is the side of the hot water heater on gas. It lights up. The third one is the electric side of the hot water heater. For the hot water heater to heat up on electric, you have to have the switch on in here. <coughs> Cabin lights turns the light right above us on. Cap light turns the LED lights on in front. Then you have your awning lights. And then you have auxiliary lights. Your auxiliary light is a blue light mounted to the frame underneath the steps. <coughs> First switch here is for your awning, second or slide room. Second one is for the awning, and then you have a battery disconnect. For the battery disconnect to be on, it has to be pulled out. When it's pushed in, it's off. It's out when it's on. Does have an AM FM stereo. We'll play a CD or a DVD between the stereo and TV. On the stereo itself, you have zones one and two. Zone one is inside, zone two is your outside speakers. Little push button by the back of the bench seat is to slide the TV up and down. The light right above the TV has to be turned on by hand, and that is a two way light. It can be turned on motion sensored or on 24 7. You have your power booster to the right of the TV, a 110 outlet, and a USB port. Uh, does have satellite and park cable hookups on the booster on the inside. Table comes off the two pedestals, goes down between the two benches. The two back cushions come over across the top of the table to make a smaller bed here. Thermostat hanging on the wall. Thermostat, when you first turn it on, goes to your fan speed, low and high. Then it goes to cool, cool low. Cool auto, cool high. You'll dial your temperature down for the AC. Hit the mode button one more time. It says heat in the lower left hand corner. You'll dial your temperature up for it. Hit that mode button one more time and it says off in the lower right hand corner. 
We're going to come down to the floor here. It does have an LP carbon monoxide detector in the trailer. It gives you one long beep when it smells LP. It gives you two beeps four times in a row when it smells carbon monoxide. Breaker box is marked with your top 30 amp main being your top as they come down. And they are marked on the side here. Car fuses on the right hand side are marked as they are from the top coming down. On the car fuses, when one of them would happen to blow, you do have a red light on the right hand side that you can also see through the tinted lens on the cover. In the bathroom area, there is a light switch on the wall above the toilet that turns the light above us on. You do have your GFI outlet in the bathroom that protects all eight outlets in the unit. Neural knob up in the ceiling cranks the fin up on top. A little black button off to the side turns the fan on. In the bathroom, you also have an air conditioner vent coming in and you have a heat vent in the floor. On your shower, you got just like you have at home, it's got hot water on the left side, cold water on the right side. It does have a dome in it for you taller guys. Also has a two shelf medicine cabinet up the top and a little storage space underneath the bathroom sink. Right above the door to the bathroom, we do have the smoke detector. We have a 110 outlet on either side of the wall around the kitchen. A little one way light above it. Does have hot and cold running water going to the kitchen sink. On the microwave, the only thing I can tell you about the microwave is it has a clock button. Let's say it's 10 o'clock. Hit the clock button again to the two center eyes is flashing. The reason I set the time on the microwave is I can tell if the trailer's lost 110 power going to it if it does not have the right time. On the stove vent, you do have a fan and a light switch. On the cook range, there is a light switch on the right hand side that you turn on. Turns the illumination lights on the knobs on. We're going to hope hold the glass stove top up two times up out of the way. You turn the gas button to where it says pilot on. Using the striker on the left hand side to light all three of the top burners. When there's gas coming through the knobs, they do turn red. Even on your oven, when you turn it to pilot on, you hold down on the button using the same striker up on top to light the oven. If you flip the switch on that light to the bottom position, you also have a light in the oven area. Pretty good sized drawer space underneath it. Pretty good sized cabinet space off to the side. On your refrigerator, it has an on and off button. You can go to the refrigerator section. It tells you that it's set on four degree, four is the temperature. When you go to the freezer, it tells you the same thing. If you're running the refrigerator and you're getting ready to go to bed at night, you can hit where the little moon's at. It turns it to a quiet mode. It does not let it run as much at night because there's nobody going to be going in and out of it. You do have the two recliners in the living room area. It does have a USB port besides the recliners for charging cell phones. Also has a light that has to be turned on by hand above it. In the bed area, there is a latch on the right hand side of the bed that makes the bed slide from side to side. There is a 110 outlet on either side of the bed in the front. We also have a fire escape window on the off door side away from the door. We have another neural knob in the vent in the ceiling up top and a black button on it to turn the fan on. It does have closet space on either side of the bed. It has cabinet space above it. All the lights in the bedroom area have to be turned on by hand. They all have little push buttons on the side of that. You do have heat coming into the bedroom area on the vent on the floor on the right hand side of the bed. But you also have two air conditioner vents above the bed in the master bedroom. There is also a curtain to partition off the bedroom from the living room area. And I think that's just about everything on the trailer. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them the best that I can. Thank you.